Thank you, Fran. I'd like to thank the Studio School and Graham Nixon for inviting me and giving me this opportunity. And uh, all of you for coming. Uh, I'll give a brief uh, uh, introduction to myself, um, since a lot of you don't know me. I was born in Greece and I went to high school in Greece. And I went to Geneva, Switzerland, where I did a BA. Then I came to New York on a Fulbright grant and did a journalism uh, master's degree. Subsequently, uh, I went to England and I studied photography. And uh, you can do the first slide, Yanni. Yeah. Um, just as an introduction, this is my dog, Agni, <laughs> shuttling between Athens and New York. Um, right after school, right after photography school in London, uh, this was in the early 70s, and uh, I wanted to plan my uh, first sort of uh, exploration. I must say here that uh, I mostly work in series, and each, each series I approach is kind of uh, a, a, an exploration towards the outside as well as towards the inside, and then it kind of serves as a, a, a diary. It, 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 uh, looking at the work, looking back at the work, I kind of uh, know what state of mind I was in and so on and so forth. So right after um, photography school in London, uh, I planned uh, uh, a journey actually to India. We never made it to India because it was the, uh, another Kashmiri-Pakistani war and the Khyber Pass was closed. Now this is going to start hitting home. You probably all have heard more than you want about Afghanistan. Uh, but uh, this is where I have to start. And I'll take you on a small uh, tour of Afghanistan at peacetime. We are in the early 70s. Oops, sorry, that went too fast. I hit it twice. Um, oh, thank you, Yanni. Uh, this is in Iran, and sort of in the middle of nowhere, suddenly we saw this sign. So. This is 1971, and actually, yes, I want to say that if you have something to say about a slide or a question to ask, it would be nice to do it as we go along, because then things can kind of get lost and it's hard to get back to. Uh, this is how we traveled, two cars, two couples, and we usually camped in the backyard of a hotel. This is in Herat. It was sort of more comfortable to be in our own headquarters. Uh, this is inside our van, and I put it in because uh, th th these are people we picked up from one village to the other, and I just, it reminded me of how beautiful those turbans that they wear uh, are, sort of like hair. Everyone is unique. And the man on the right was a teacher, so we were able to converse with him in English, which was not very common. Uh, this is uh, uh, the most western-looking shop at the time in Afghanistan. It was in Herat, and all the foreigners would stop there and buy things they didn't have, like uh, detergent and uh, ketchup or whatever. And then on the way out, you, you would stop back there and sell all your stuff. that You didn't want to carry it back with you. So it was a neat little business. This is the big mosque in Mazari Sharif, up north, which we have heard, we haven't really heard anything about. I hope it's still there. Up in Mazari Sharif, a woman feeding pigeons. Very peaceful, very poor, but very peaceful and very friendly.
No, not at all. Uh, the king was still in power and uh, his wife, the queen, had uh, publicly removed the burqa. So the women were really, you know, doing quite well at the time. This is the Russian influence. There were some of us everywhere. And also, um, there was one road in Afghanistan. One was from uh, west down to Kandahar and up to Kabul, and that was the American road. And another road was from uh, Kabul up north to Mazari Sharif, and that was the Russian road. So already at the time there was this kind of, you know, influence from both sides. So merry-go-round, a wonderful construction, I thought. A bakery. This is lunch at a metal workshop. Inside one of the chai places. A dishwasher. And this is the famous game of Boskashi with the horses and the um, beheaded goat. It's a wedding, actually. Th these kind of events uh, took place uh, as celebrations, and there was a, a prize offered to the winner. This is one of the players who's losing his turban as he's running with his horse. What the beheaded goat do? Horses Instead of a ball, it's like polo. Uh, they, they've reported that in the news recently. It's, uh, I thought you. Well, this was really the. the uh, I was. Uh, uh, I had just finished school, so I was trying to um, make uh, as beautiful photographs as I could in terms of, uh, you know, I was concerned about the quality. And uh, m most of them are pictorial, and I was just kind of testing myself to see how good they could be. And they are documentary, but uh, um, also, you know, um, trying to uh, uh, share with others the experience that was there. Um, actually, we were developing the black and white film on, on the way. And this is also going towards uh, one of those uh, horse games uh, for a wedding. It's up in the hills. <coughs> and this is uh, a self-portrait um, with uh, my husband uh, at the time. And uh, we hired the local photographer. We ordered uh, uh, like 30 prints. And I think uh, he was dazzled. I don't think he had such a big order ever. And it was one of those paper negatives where you dump the thing in the juice, you have a bucket with uh, a very uh, primitive kind of uh, developing, but uh, I love this picture. Okay, and then um, uh, back to New York. I came back to New York and essentially I started walking the streets and photographing on the street. And uh, this was a, a mural on uh, Houston Street. And um, I got very interested in art uh, that nameless people were doing on the street, like this. And uh, also uh, people who were involved in series. Well, this is a social commentary. Clone research, of course, at the time was in its infancy but somebody thought it was important. And uh, like there was somebody who was making these blue cutouts and sticking them all over the place. You could, you, you could uh, see them everywhere. So I kind of made a record of that because I thought they were very successful. And there was this stencil. Maybe some of you remember it. It was everywhere. This is Richard Hamilton, um, who did a lot of wonderful uh, street paintings like that. Later on, I think he went on canvas. It was 
not really as successful as that. He was very good at putting them in the urban environment. This person was drawing cats everywhere. And this is very recent. It was dur last year, during the fall of dot-com. And uh, I just thought it was a funny image. OK, now, uh, like ev we'll, you'll see some of the graffiti series, the, the previous series I call graffiti series. And you'll see how I've used some of them later. And as every artist, I suppose, I started exploring the human body. So I have a series of nudes, which I will uh, flick through, from different periods of time. Uh, this was a self-portrait. These were composites, but uh, way before computers existed. They were done with two negatives, not sandwiched, but on uh, the same piece of paper. I had to draw where one ended and the other began, and I did a series which I called Nude Landscapes. This is uh, a, a little later. I just started playing around with things, and this may be one of the first times that I used uh, kind of cut up, you know, sections of uh, paper and so forth and uh, a drawing on the picture. Um, this was a series of large-scale large nudes. This was inspired uh, from one of the river gods on the Acropolis called Dilysos. And they were, uh, the prints were uh, uh, life size. This is called Amphora from the same series. The Three Graces. Self portrait. And this is, um, uh, he was the son of a friend of mine who got on the set, and each time I clicked the shutter, he would change postures. It was amazing. And again, uh, he's a doctor now. <laughs> uh, OK. And then we go to Ellis Island. Ellis Island was sort of the first big self-assigned project. And I spent quite a few months there, two, three, four times a week. There was no one there. It was completely deserted. I had uh, carte blanche from the parks department. I would go there in the morning and wander around and do my pictures. Later on, uh, a lot of photographers uh, were, you know, claiming turf. So I was very happy that I did my stuff before this whole thing started. And three of those pieces, uh, are in the permanent uh, collection of the Ellis Island Museum. Now this you might want to remember because I used uh, material from this photograph uh, in a different way later. Ellis Island? Uh, well, uh, I read a little um, uh, piece about Ellis Island in the New York Times, and there was a tiny black and white photograph of some buildings in decay. And I always uh, liked buildings in decay, possibly because I grew up in Greece after the war, and there were a lot of deserted houses in my neighborhood. And I used to sneak in from broken windows and explore and uh, find sort of things that people had left behind. And I was very impressed by how the departed people had left their mark. And uh, I would sort of, you know, it, it would fire my imagination as to what happened to them and so forth. And uh, in Ellis Island, that was extremely strong. Uh, everybody who arrived there was peeking 
in uh, expectation and so forth, and uh, the feelings were literally crawling off the walls. I'm afraid all that is finished after the renovation. No, it's all available light, uh, mostly on a tripod, but I also was, uh, you know, certain things I photographed repeatedly until I got what I wanted, because the light was moving a lot. This is all Kodachrome, 35 millimeter. Yes, these are. Some of the Afghanistan were uh, two and a quarter. This is also in the Museum of Ellis Island. I call this spaceship. And this is the, the universe, cosmos. And this is a self-portrait in Ellis Island. This just shows you how empty it was because I could kind of, you know, it was my turf in a way. Okay, that's, uh, oh, this is the installation of the Ellis Island the material at PS1, before PS1 was with uh, Museum of Modern Art and so forth. And uh, I made this, it's two rooms, one on this side and one on the other. I always was uh, interested in cars, including um, uh, damaged cars. And uh, this was probably very near the graffiti period. It's a black and white print painted over. Uh, as is this one. And then I did a whole series on uh, broken cars. The series is called uh, Universal Salvage, which was the name of a, a, a junkyard in Long Island that I used to frequent and uh, do pictures. Also uh, available light, preferably um, not sunny. Sorry? Are we looking at yes. Are looking at the That's right. Uh, sorry, the what? This one? No. You're talking about this front? Uh, this is the way it was. It's chrome that has decayed. I did a lot of uh, photographs of broken windshields, and that led to the next stage, which is coming up. This I call lunar landscapes. This is the roof of a car. The paint has uh, become like craters. No, I uh, went there repeatedly. Well, yes, but you so, see, w with the light changing, everything is different every day. It's never the same. I just knew I was better off in low light and not sun. So this is the uh, next series I worked on, which came uh, directly out of the Universal Salvage series. Both uh, the left and the right piece are from um, uh, shields and I just needed to get out into space and uh, uh, these are metal constructions 
The middle one is uh, a freestanding piece and the other ones are wall pieces. Metal constructions with uh, glass and uh, photographs uh, mounted on aluminum, sandwiched in between with bolts and stuff. I don't know how much of it you can see. And this was installed at the Athens College Library in Athens. It's called The Book. You can see how the shape of the uh, black metal part behind comes right out of the picture. Oops. This is called Totem. And the back of it. This is ar uh, around uh, 1990. The uh, car series uh, ended, it was done in 89, and at that point I was really, I had stopped taking photographs. So I was using material from photographs to go to the next stage. And there was a series of nine pieces like that, but only three ended up being uh, executed because uh, Unless you sell them, you have to store them, and each time you move them, you need a crane, and it's really a big, big problem. This is installed now at my house in Athens. Sorry, this is so out of focus. Uh, it's a piece that uh, I did, I think, in 1991, which originates uh, uh, many years before in India. I spent quite a lot of time in India, and I was in Puri, which was, is a sacred uh, city, and I was walking on the waterfront, and I saw this procession. I approached, I realized that uh, people didn't mind my presence. So I followed, and I realized, uh, you know, it was a funeral. This is the son with the mother. I'm sorry, I hope this doesn't offend some people, but it's just daily life in India and death. And uh, finally, oh, well, this is the environment. It was on a beach. Now the pyre is going. And this is the picture. Um, when I was doing this picture, I tr at some point I realized how important it was and uh, I tried to check my cameras to see what the exposure was and it was impossible. I was completely on automatic pilot. And also when I returned, I had maybe 80 rolls of film and this is the only picture I really you know, wanted to see. S and it was on the second roll I was checking and it was exactly what I wanted. Uh, this is again pre-computer, sorry this is so fuzzy. Uh, I did this on the Xerox machine ori originally uh, to pixelate the image. I was just playing around and I was very interested the way the last pixelation, this is maximum pixelation here, ended up being an arrow pointing towards the light. And uh, the piece had many incarnations but uh, finally it was this piece, which folds uh, its quarter-inch aluminum on the outside and laminated photographs inside. Uh, occasionally, I put myself in the picture um, uh, sort of for, for, um, to show the scale. Yes. Oh, the le that's uh, uh, an interesting thing. The uh, wording on that picture is uh, words of the Greek poet Elitis, Nobel laureate. Um, it says uh, something like, here am I. And uh, funnily enough, uh, the opening at the, um, uh, of this show was on a Monday, and uh, um, Elitis happened to die on the Sunday. So. It ended up being a homage to him, unknowingly, really. Okay, this is the part of the, obviously, part of the graffiti series. I made a collage out of it. It's five pictures. 
and it stayed like that for a while. And then I was experimenting with uh, perspective. Uh, and I photographed it at uh, strange angles. And then it uh, finally became a piece uh, of uh, aluminum. It, it's, it's kind of a, a, a shallow pyramid, and it has the perspective reversed. And as I said, I had stopped taking pictures for a while, and then I discovered those little pocket cameras, and I started uh, uh, working with them and just taking snapshots uh, here and there and uh, developing them at the um, drugstore. And um, also I had, uh, I think, in fact, that it's around this time that I uh, did some marathons at the studio school which influenced my work in several ways and uh, was an invaluable experience. And I had a show coming up. I wasn't about to show painting. And so uh, I had been admiring David Hockney's work for years, his photographic work, that is. Uh, but I didn't uh, dare try it because I thought people would say, oh, there she's doing a Hockney. Uh, but at this point, I just wanted to do them, and I did a series in uh, his technique, kind of. Uh, a lot of those, uh, not a lot, uh, except for the previous one, which was my bathroom, uh, all of them were done on 42nd Street uh, with all those theaters that were decaying, and this was the symphony. This was in front of the Victory Theater. I mean, the images, some of the images were. The Empire. be curious to see what they look like today. And uh, stones, I, I, for years and years I've collected stones like many of us have. So in, the, in a similar technique I did this stone and I did it in several versions. This is a black and white print, uh, maybe four or five feet high and graphite on it. These are two 4 by 8 panels uh, with uh, black and white silver prints uh, stuck on them. It's all, all of these are the same uh, stone, sort of seen differently. Uh, this is another stone which, this is purely photographic and it's just printed in different ways. This is a drawing of the same stone. This is an, uh, a tiny little pebble with a photograph with uh, graphite. It's called shelter. And this is called metropolis, same technique. There is a, a thing with scale. I've always kind of had this uh, um, experience of uh, scale play playing back and forth. And these were again the Hearthstone series. These were Xeroxes and uh, watercolors on top of them. And now we come to kind of a, a, a breaking point. Uh, or, or a new beginning, if you like. It's a series, I, I'm going to, uh, this is a work by Mondrian, obviously, or a mock-up of it. And uh, I have a little video uh, clip which will explain uh, what, what happened with this analysis. It was in the summer of 1991, I think, that I was 
This is the this is the this four together. There was more. There was another grid, a very regular, on a diagonal grid that completed the picture until we got to that point. Okay. And uh, shall we do? Uh, I did a little animation of that. Can we see that, Yanni, please? Okay, and uh, then I played around with the color a lot uh, to show the, well, uh, my, my idea was that uh, this gray that uh, Mondrian had chosen was uh, like a combination of several colors in, in layers, very thin layers. Uh, it, it, it's not really, I, I don't know if it quite works, but it shows you the infinite possibilities, so we can see it. Okay. Uh, we close that. Oh, well, well, oh, never mind. I wanted to say something about the intersections. If you look at this work for a long time, where the lines intersect, uh, you see actually light bursting. It's a very interesting experience. 
Uh, okay, we can go to the uh, next uh, slides. This was a, a decisive uh, uh, point in my work because I, I uh, through this Mondrian, I had figured out a whole system uh, of work of with lines. I got very involved with lines and uh, you will see how I used it subsequently in the next series. Uh, this this uh, article I clipped from the Science Times in 1989, and then I found it again uh, 10 years later, in fact, and uh, started, uh, I, I was fascinated, but it, it, it's, it's a mathematical configuration by a mathematician, Roger Penrose in England, and uh, he did this uh, study to prove that the, the, there exists such a thing as five-fold symmetry, which theoretically did not exist. I won't go uh, more into technical things, but uh, it demonstrates the, it's based and it, it kind of repeats the uh, golden mean, and uh, it's infinite, it's non-repeatable. It's kind, it kind of has some characteristics that fractals have, and uh, concentric uh, things getting bigger and bigger, and although the section seems similar, it really never repeats itself. So uh, the whole of the next series is based on that. This is the grid, this is the, the web, rather, uh, that Penrose um, provided, and uh, on which I started uh, my work uh, first, by extending all the lines. And I got something like this. The, 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 the dots are in the intersections of five lines. And I started seeing uh, several things. Uh, the first, uh, at first I noticed that there were small stars appearing in this web. And the more I looked, it, it takes a little bit of getting used to, I saw here is the three stars on top, and then there were bigger stars and bigger and bigger and bigger, um, and uh, two, nine bigger stars. There's not in a certain section of grid, of web, there's nine possibilities of sizes. And I thought that was very interesting because also the vectors of the uh, original rhombuses are all adding up to nine. It, it's, it gets a bit technical, but to me it was very fascinating. This uh, is a decomposition of that web, and I found that it was five sets of parallel lines in very specific positions um, that created this uh, web here in the middle at the bottom. And the original configuration I was working on lived within this wider web. So all the work that you will see from here on, this section, is based, uh, is really studying this web and um, making different works out of it. This is a velvet on canvas uh, with uh, silk ribbons and copper nails holding the, uh, the uh, ribbons on the stretcher. And it's called super blue. Oh, God. <laughs> it was very meditative work. It, 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 I had to measure everything, otherwise things went out of whack. Uh, but uh, I would work as lo many hours, and then I would stop and go on to something else and go back to it but not for too long because then I would forget exactly my system, how I would go about it. So they took a long time, but they were very satisfying. Okay, now we will see uh, a little video, which actually it's from my show in uh, last year at the Foundation of Hellenic Culture, and there I had made a table which looked very much like the table that was in my studio with all the different things that uh, I used to, uh, not the ribbon work, but the, rather the drawings. And this will lead to uh, a shortened version of a video I did in relation to this, uh, uh, this work. 
or which rather illustrates this work. This is the, the, the grid here. I'm trying to extend it. And I did three-dimensional uh, things and a lot of drawings which are all in uh, red. It all comes out of the same thing. At the time I was doing, I was working on a set for a play for Cyclops and I used these uh, shapes to make the Cyclops' mask. That was what that was. And here are the little pieces. We are going to see the collages later. The little fragments of photographs that I was using. I think it gets a bit jerky at this size, but uh, this is a match construction before and after. And the video you will see, or a, a part of the video you will see is based on the burning process, is the burning process. The circular um, shape of light was uh, kind of creating a geodesic or a very spacious uh, um, feeling. Well, the, the common thread is that I'm interested in, uh, in those things. It's, it's kind of an exploration, and as I said in the beginning. And uh, if something uh, draws my attention and my interest, I, and particularly if I have completed a, a series, you know, if I have closed something behind me, I don't see why I shouldn't uh, dive into something that might seem completely new or... Uh, possibly unrelated, although I feel that uh, uh, they are all related in several ways. But uh, I also would like to hear from you, uh, if you uh, how you feel about that. Um, OK, so let's see uh, the, I have two little things to show you, two clips that have to do with the, um, with this work, this, uh, quasi-periodic work. And this demonstrates how, how they all fit together. It's the fractal aspect. Uh, 
Uh, I want to say that uh, all these drawings that you see now in color and so forth were done by hand, and then they were scanned in the computer, and I, uh, I played with the colors uh, digitally. But all the studies were done in black and white on mylar. Uh, in the beginning, I was really working very, very tight. I was very concerned about uh, distances between things, and uh, I wanted it all to look right. And soon, I discovered that uh, the eye can readjust itself to, wait a second, to, um, to different, uh, you know, if they were crooked, it didn't really matter. So I, I got a lot looser in the work. You will see the collage work later. And in this particular one, I was uh, playing with uh, the, uh, the value of the red and blue coming back and forth. We can play it now. Now we will see some of the drawings that came out of this work and uh, the big collages. As I said, these were originally done by hand and subsequently worked in the computer and they were presented as uh, digital prints. This is also based on uh, the same thing, but they are getting, they, they, they at some point they got more and more loose and less, uh, you know, stuck to their origin. And then I did a, um, a bunch of collages with this work. This is one of the early ones, and uh, it was photographs, but uh, I painted over every one of them, uh, uh, keeping only the foot. This is called quasi-periodic chair. Uh, this piece you will see uh, later on um, uh, as a big, in a different uh, version, but this is the original uh, work. Uh, this comes from, uh, it's a different process. The, the first uh, ones you saw were each square is a picture. These ones are uh, a big picture cut up and reconfigured. This one is from the Universal Salvage series. And this one is that bed from Ellis Island. This is called Salt Lake City. Uh, small pictures, each, each square is a picture. It's actually uh, uh, one of those uh, made in India manholes on the um, on, on in the streets, and uh, they have solderings on them. It was just a, an interesting uh, quality to me. And this is called California. And the most ambitious, the biggest work was this one called 42nd Street. Uh, about 11 feet long and uh, what maybe five high I'll show you some details this is the left panel
Or the middle panel. And the right panel. There it is. Now, um, when I when I uh, th these pieces uh, uh, I work I worked on for a long time, and the photographs were loose on the surface on which I stick them, which was Sintra and canvas on top. And uh, at some point, uh, when this was uh, still worked at on my table. I received a phone call from Greece that uh, my father had passed away. So I left it uh, there, loose as it was, and I went to Greece. And when I came back, I had a good look at it, and I moved maybe two or three Im uh, images, and I realized it had been finished at that point. And the reason I'm uh, mentioning that is because I had a show coming up in Greece. I had shown this series here at Art Resources and at the Hellenic Foundation. And uh, um, I was moved to do um, a show in homage to my father, which uh, I have a small video of. And I used some of these works as sort of an environment uh, but I didn't uh, ship the original works to Greece. I uh, made uh, very big digital prints of them, some of them on the floor and so forth. So we will uh, see a little video of, the, uh, of that show, uh, which uh, couldn't really have been uh, done anywhere else but at Ileana Tunda. You will see why. It starts with going back to find my, um, my father's car. Uh, my father drove this car from the 1950s all the way to when he died, so he was very identified with this uh, car. It's a documentary of the setting up of the show. It's an English car that the English police used to drive in the early 50s. It's called a Wolseley. They don't exist anymore. We couldn't drive it, it all had to be by, done by hand. There were four steps to go up. Some of the works I did as uh, light boxes for this show, different incarnations. It's su super blue as a light box. 
it's one of one of my father's favorite songs was Spread as There's Heaven, so it was the overall sound. There's two videos projected on it, one from the top to the front and one from the inside to the back, which is a lot more intimate. That's a mural that originated mm, somewhere else many years before, but it had a romantic quality, so I used it for the show. This is the other piece you saw as a print, also done as a light box, actually. It worked pretty well. It's always interesting to me to try new things uh, with all the technology available today. This is my mother. Okay, we're almost done. Um, I, I, there's a few um, pictures of some installations in the next folder. And uh, then the last piece. It's a still of, the, of that installation. and the mural with the other piece on the floor. Uh, the, uh, that became an installation, the back one. Uh, no, I, I, was, uh, I just got back. I haven't really seen anything. Yes. But I was away working on some things in Greece. This is a, an installation uh, in a, an old renovated slaughterhouse for a festival in Arvos, uh, in Greece. And uh, it's a steel pyramid with uh, the box of uh, skulls on top from all sides. And on the right is a flat piece of the same subject. They are both called altar. This is the installation of my little corner at the Queen's Museum. 
uh, not my choice of uh, works. The, the one on the left, uh, you will see again, I did a, a big corporate co commission with, uh, the, with a version of it. Here it is. It's a steel piece with a, a, a half inch glass in one piece ground by hand. It was quite a challenge, and it's the crew that, the part of the crew that installed it. And this is a piece I did for uh, an, uh, one of the Olympic shows in Greece. It's uh, digital prints uh, stretched on stretchers and uh, leaning against the wall. It's called Rated X. Okay, and uh, the last item tonight is uh, a video I just completed, which uh, I will show as an installation at Art Resources Transfer uh, beginning um, end of February. Watch the corner.
that's it.